Holy! What's good, everybody? It's Warum Plus here with the one and only raid on Onigashima Nami gameplay guide. Now I'm gonna go over everything about her, what her pros are, what her cons are, her skills, her traits, the stats that you should build on her medals, as well as recommended medal sets, and kind of how you should play in your league battle battles, just so you can get an idea. And this is kind of oriented towards the newer players and help them out and help you guys overall. All right, to dive in, first we're going to start with her skills. Skill one, it's called Lightning Blast. It's a long range area attack with a chance to shock, spawn Zeus at a long range, and Zeus can be moved with the skill button when it's held down. So you press and hold the skill, don't just let go of it right away. It shoots down an original lightning bolt, and then you can control Zeus and basically spin him around and keep shocking the target that you hit over and over and over again. This skill is not generally meant for damage, but it is meant to get your lightning shocks off and if you're shocking the enemy you do get attack stacks i'll dive into that later once we get into the trace but it's actually an extremely useful skill you do want to play with this skill kind of outside i'll dive into how you should be playing her because it is a kind of a long range move and you can utilize it for a bunch of different scenarios all right you guys skill two is called thunder lance tempo a long range area attack with a chance to shock the damage dealt will disregard the enemy's defense stat and ignores obstacles what ignores obstacles means is that you can use it through walls so somewhere like arlong park you can use it through the big tower wall on different maps like dress rosa there's like across the different like buildings any objects objects that are in the way like thriller bark you can go through and hit the enemy on the other side these skills are not too common but there are a few characters who do have this ability this is one of your main source of damage abilities as it does ignore defense so it's very useful for killing that target and it does leave them shocked as well so you can at least chunk people down if they have certain traits that allow them to be stronger when they are above certain amount of HP. Perhaps like many defenders have extra damage reduction when they're above 70% or 50% defense. This will allow you to chunk them down and bring them down to a lower level where you will be able to fight them and finish them off a lot easier. All right, let's move into her character traits. When you are performing a perfect dodge, inflict self with invisibility for five seconds. This is actually extremely useful because it allows you to reposition yourself after you get a perfect dodge and it does require skill so it rewards you for being a better player in which you can reposition yourself to shock the enemy after you come out of that invisibility as they won't be able to see you and you can fit into a better spot and actually get a little distance between you and the enemy since you are kind of better at the range if you have your skills up next when your character is inflicted with invisibility the speed is boosted by 20 percent these kind of go hand in hand obviously help you get to your repositioning when your HP is more than 30%, one HP will be left when killed by the enemy. This is useful, believe it or not, because if you are to get one shot by an enemy on their team boost, you could potentially get knocked down, saved with that skill, that one HP trade, and then you can go and heal back up if you are able to shock them as soon as you get back up. So that does require a little bit of skill on your part, but it can result in a comeback from you. When enemies are inflicted with shock, increase attack by 15%, which increases up to 75% in total, and then recover HP by 15%. So for those of you who can't do that math right there, that is a total of five stacks each time. You can get four stacks from your skill one in total. I'll dive into that later, and you can get an extra last stack on your skill two. So in total, you can get completely stacked up just by using both your skills if you land everything. And you get a little extra heals on top of it, which is phenomenal. Now, when your HP is more than 70%, reduce damage received by 30% and reduce damage received from attackers by 20%. She is oriented towards fighting the film Red Shanks, who has been the destroyer of the meta and kind of ruins a lot of people's fun when they play the game. So that is the reason that she's kind of oriented in this way so that she can kind of push him out of the meta. She's a red attacker. She is meant to destroy the green attackers and green defenders and pretty much any greens in general. So she does a lot of damage, especially when she's fully stacked. Next, when attacking... An attacker, remove the status effects applied to the enemy that buff their target for a certain period of time. When this trait activates, it also nullifies status effects applied to the enemy, does not apply to invincibility, and reduces the cooldown time of skill 2 by 5%. Basically, Film Red Shanks' red hair effect is what this is saying, so you will be able to remove that and allow yourself to get a little extra cooldown as well. So this is, again, designed to counter him. There are other units who fall into this category that can be debuffed, such as like Blue Big Mom Runner. There are some unfortunate casualties while this, because Blue Big Mom is not actually huge, but it happens, and that is what it is. Now, you also, the last trait is you get extra cooldown on your dodge. This is phenomenal, which will allow you, this kind of works with your invisibility, as it allows you to keep dodging, get that invisibility, get the shock off, 
And then you can keep getting perfect dodges as well. And it's, it's always respawning. And especially against fighting Big Mom, the Olin Big Mom, the red one, red defender one. This will allow you to get your dodge back in time after she uses her first Mazer Cannon. Because sometimes the Big Mom spam the skills in which your dodge doesn't come back up in time. So you still get hit by these skills even if you perfect dodge the first one. Alright you guys, now I'm going to push into who is Nami good against? This is kind of the characters that she'll thrive against, especially certain units that are in the meta and are kind of thriving in there. The first ones is obviously who she's oriented towards fighting is Shanks. You don't necessarily want to fight in a straight one-on-one -on -one with him, as I think Nami is kind of meant to be played like a sniper a little bit and a little bit farther back. So be careful and be wary of that good against, given she doesn't have too many counters, especially in the current meta. A lot of the current meta units, she's phenomenal against. So units such as Hybrid Kaido, King, Big Mom, Zoro. So let's start with like Kaido, King, Big Mom. If you can get the shock on them, especially if Big Mom's not on her flag, you generally get a free kill as soon as you have that. So what is Nami's like drawback is that she doesn't have her skill cooldowns back in time. We'll get to that later on how you should play her and metal sets and whatnot. So overall, she actually counters a lot of the meta, the Kaidos, Big Moms, Zoros, Yamato, Uta. Watch out for the Yamato and Uta. That is the strong, like, number one recommended. Generally, you want to play a little bit farther away. She is somewhat of a rat attacker, if you will, because of the fact that she usually runs away and then she shoots her shock from kind of far away and just plays the distance mode, kind of like Usopp does back in Dressrosa Usopp when he was out and in the meta. When it comes to someone like Olin, though, Nami does have enough damage to kill her with the touch of normal attacks, but I do think you have to be careful and don't get a flame. That is, again, staying, keeping your distance away from the Big Mom. If you're able to shock her, that'll come in clutch. If the Big Mom's able to perfect dodge your shocks or you miss a skill, I don't think you will have enough to kill her, and the Big Mom generally will be able to heal up, if not on you, then on someone else, for the most part, unless she gets anti-healed. So, Big Mom is probably a skill oriented fight and you probably want to rely on her getting distracted big mom does result in a lot of free perfect dodges because her skills are slower to go off so you can get the perfect dodge you do have that dodge cooldown by 50 percent which allows you to keep getting that back so you should be able to perfect dodge all of them the only one you might struggle with is potentially full gora as that one's a little bit quicker so watch out for that one that would be my number one recommendation but when you get that perfect dodge get that invisibility and get to a spot where you can shock nicely same thing goes for kind of king as he'll be running in his pteranodon where he's running straight at you at the speed of light but you can just perfect dodge him and then generally you can shock him right after or shock him as he's running straight at you because he's not immune to status effects while he's in his pteranodon form all right now talking about who counters nami you have to worry about people like hybrid yamato uta and ex blue luffy as they can demolish you the shields users basically give them free invincibility so all they have to do is run up on you and if they decide to focus you and can get in range of you you're probably going to die because the uta at least has to just land her one sing skill if you don't perfect dodge that which that skill is very difficult to perfect dodge she will generally one shot you and kill you now hybrid yamato is kind of the same scenario but yamato's shield is a little bit tankier so she won't get shocked right away so you won't get the attack buff if the yamato is focusing you she'll probably keep attacking you you won't be able to get the shock skills off going and if yamato does perfect dodge just one of the skills you're probably going to be in trouble if she doesn't and you land everything on her and can get the shocks off you should be able to destroy her actually fairly easily all right i would like to talk about her pros and cons let's start with actually her cons this time in this video her skills are very long range which can result in struggling in a 1v1 up close match so people who can jump on you, such as Charlotte Cracker, potentially. Yamato. The Cracker is more of a skill matchup. But people who get up in your face, especially if you don't have your skills on you, will result in a tough match. Minami's basic attacks are solid, but they're not the greatest. And if you miss any of your skills, they can result in destroying you. As Nami doesn't have too much defensively going for her. And as I said earlier, she is meant to kind of be played like a sniper. Does fat damage, but at a longer type of range. Her defense and her HP are on the lower ends of, of the overall character list. So that's another thing that kind of adds to her being squishier. So again, stay outside of the fight if you can and help avoiding that. You're 
going to probably be struggling in order to hold flags if you're trying to defend, but she is an attacker. She is meant to push, not necessarily defend. So ideally, try and be in that scenario at all times. One of her other major cons is if you do happen to miss your skills, that will result in you not getting almost any cooldown for those skills. And depending on what metal set you're running, that could result in those being gone for quite a bit, which will result in you being kind of defenseless for a while. So she does get fat cooldowns on her skills, provided she lands them. So if she ends up missing both of them, it can be very detrimental to you. All right, let's talk about her pros now. She does have very short cooldowns, provided she lands her skills. Her skill two is actually generally pretty short, but the skill one, it can be a little bit longer if she doesn't land anything. Her damage is actually extremely high. People who get 70% attack buffs can do a lot of damage. She does have the ability to theoretically be two places at once, as she can sit on the flag with her Zeus, and then she can press skill one and shoot the Zeus somewhere else across the map without having to worry about getting hit, provided the enemy's not anywhere near you, your actual body. The skill 2 ignores defense, which helps with a lot of defense stackers. And your skill 2 goes through obstacles, which can be used for sneak attacks around the walls. Indivisibility and the speed buffs are insanely useful for repositioning yourself. Your damage reduction against attackers actually helps you get tankier. I said earlier that she does not have too much defensively going for her. She has the damage reduction against attackers, but in this game and the amount of damage that exists, it's very easy to get one shot. She gets rid of some very obnoxious state effects like Big Mom's shock effect. She's not so cancer anymore. This is the blue runner Big Mom that I'm referring to. And Shanks' red hair effect, as well as Fleet Admiral Akainu's lava state. Those are very obnoxious states, and that's basically what Shanks and Akainu bank off of. So if you eliminate those states, it makes them half the characters that they generally are in the first place. She does have an extremely quick dodge, which allows her to move around and adjust herself very quickly. And as I said earlier, these are all going to the traits, as she will be left with the 1 HP and her shot can heal you back up, which gives you basically an extra life in some ways. All right, you guys, now for some general tips that I would like to recommend to you guys for when you're playing her. I said, I've mentioned this a few times now, play her like a sniper. You do large amounts of damage, but try to stay out of the fight. If you go into the fray, you're going to die very likely because there's so much damage. Leave the fray, the middle of the fights, to the defenders as they have a lot more stats and tankiness going for them that help them survive that stuff. So in general, when you are playing Nami, use that skill one, it basically allows you to be in two places at once. So you can press and hold that skill, but start playing as Zeus, go around and shock the entire enemy team, especially if they're all in one place. Most people will not be paying attention to the Zeus because it moves so quickly, as well as it's not the easiest to see unless you're, it's the only thing happening on the map. But if there's a bunch of different fights going on, people aren't going to be paying attention to you. You can use the Zeus from afar and deal damage to the Yamatos and Utas to their shield, which will benefit your team significantly, especially. So, like, trying to break people's shields or break things that, like, help them protect themselves. Or there's certain, like, kings you can kind of assist in breaking the hits if you, someone else is trying to stop a king from taking your flag. There's a variety of different uses for this. And if someone perfect dodges your skill one, it lasts for a while. So if you keep chasing them and spin around, you will be able to get a shock kind of right at the end. Many of her matchups are very skill oriented. So as I said, if they perfect dodge your skills, you will be in trouble. But if you perfect dodge their skills, it actually goes heavily in your favor. So there's just some things to watch out for because some people just have no idea where you're going to run. And if you're very tricky and hard to read, then it makes it almost impossible and you can get a free shock skill for sure. So overall, generally, that's pretty much just play her like a sniper. Don't go into the center of the fight. That's basically all there is to it. All right, you guys, now before I go into the metal set recommendations for Nami, I want to talk about the stats that you should build on your medals in the first place. Now, she does have large amounts of attack, but she is lower on the defense and HP. I do think it is better to run full attack and defense, provided you can get 18% medals and build two stats. If you can only use 14% metal traits for in your newer player, then just go for attack and worry about the defensive stats later. So in general, attack and defense is the way to go. It will provide your survivability, and all those people who have attack buffs, this will become much more useful for you. All right, now let's talk about some of the best metal sets for her. I know many of you are going to be like, go for the Sulong set. That's going to be the greatest. Well, not always, as she already has built-in cooldowns, so you really don't have to stack those cooldowns. They are good metal sets for her, but it's kind of a little bit overkill, and you're getting a little bit of overkill with the amount of cooldown that you have. Now, for the first metal set recommendation is going to be the generic Kaido set. 
Now, you can mix and match these around, but if you have the triple Kaido set, you get the skill 1 cooldown on the hybrid Kaido medal, which will allow you to get 8% when you take a flag. This Conqueror of the Worlds, Ragnarok's Kaido, is very useful. They have large amounts of tags on there as well. That's about 6 tags on there, which gives you skill 1, skill 2, dodge, capture, some damage increase, and some damage reduction, which goes a long way overall. This is one of the best metal sets in the game. I always recommend it because you can do so much with it. Next would be the Blast Breath Metal. Now this, because you can stay on your flag and inflict damage from long range with your Zeus skill 1, this will allow you to press skill 1 on your flag, get the damage increase, and hit people from so far away while you get that extra 5% damage increase, so it actually goes a long way. Usually this is better for defenders, but Nami's actually able to capitalize off using that. Then lastly, the Kaido Metal. Now this one is actually so often used, I do recommend being able to get this. If you are a newer player, try your best to be able to come across and get this medal. Sometimes you have to play with people. If you pull this Kaido or you see this Kaido featured on a banner, this is definitely worth it. The When attacked by an enemy, you have a 100% chance to get your skill 1 cooldown reduced by 2% can be very useful. And remember, you're always trying to go for that skill 1 because it helps you stack the quickest. Now, overall, this Kaido set is, one of, again, one of the best in the game. I strongly recommend to everyone. I have it built out. I, it's probably one of my best built sets in the entire game that I have. So, next one I'm going to dive into is going to be another Beast Pirates oriented. It's going to be the original Kaido Metal with that skill 1 cooldown when getting hit by 2%. Then you're going to have the Wildfire Event Metal, which does the same thing. 100% chance to reduce skill 1 by 2% when you're hit. So, instead of getting 2% back when you're hit, you're going to get 4% back. Now, you do miss a little bit of tags because King only has 3 matching tags instead of the 6 that Kaido has. But you still get 3 double effect traits on 3 of those as well as the triple effect on the three that King offers as well, which is also his skill one, his skill two, as well as his dodge. So gives you the fat amount of dodge. That always goes a long range, especially with her cooldown on that. Then the last one is the Blast Breath Metal. You get the damage increase on being on your own flag because you can kind of play defensively like that when you're sniping from far away. The next metal set that I'm going to recommend is the Triple Boa set. Now, this set does have a few tags missing. This was originally known as to being the best one, but you can generally get triple effect on five of the six, which is actually huge. Again, it's kind of the same type of things. You get some damage increases. You don't have damage reduction in these tags, so keep that in mind when you're doing that. But you only have skill one. It only gives you a double effect for 14% cooldown. But this is also known as one of the best metal sets in the game because... This is early on, it was a huge deal and allows you to do so many things with it. So the first one, the Hancock Metal. When your team has more treasure, you get reduction of skill 1 by 13%, and you just sit there and hold it so it cools down faster and comes in handy for you. Now, when your team has less treasure, you have the increased damage by 5%, so this will be huge. You can melt people. You already do so much damage with that attack buff. All you need is damage increase left to, in order to melt your targets. Then, lastly, the Perfume Femur Metal. When attacking an enemy around your enemy's treasure, you have the increased damage by 5%. So if you're down in flags, you're attacking the enemy on their enemy flag, you'll be able to get 10% damage increase just from that, as well as damage increase you get from your tags. So these go a long way. It's a very good set. I would recommend that as well. Next up is going to be the Triple Luffy Metal set. This one might be better, if not the same, as the Boa. It offers so much damage increase. You could do the Dressrosa version, or you could do the Wano version, whichever one you're able to come across. I personally think the Dressrosa version is better, but it requires an old event medal. If you're able to do that, you can always mix and match these Luffy medals. So you newer players who don't have all the medals, try and get the Luffys. They will be extremely useful and can be very versatile on using on any character. So would recommend this. I generally use the Fire Fist Pistol Red Hawk medal, the Lucy medal, which is an old event one, and the King Kong medal, as it gives me triple effect for all the traits that you have. So there's six traits. It's all damage increase oriented, along with a skill one, skill two, dodge and capture flag. They're pretty generic, so it's pretty common, pretty well known. Many of the veteran players use them. I would recommend. Now, if you're looking for a little faster cooldown oriented metal set, this one's actually really well. The Mont Dior event metal, if you have this, has 10% skill 1, 10% skill 2. When you're on your flag and it's charged 80% or more, this is questionable because if you have a defender who charges the flag, it'll be worth it. If you're trying to charge the flag as an attacker, it's generally not going to be very good. I don't recommend doing that. But it can be useful in certain circumstances. Next up, the Heat Heat Metal. It's an older event metal as well. When your HP is above 70%, you'll get skill 1 by 10% reduction. So, 
it's actually pretty solid. The tags are not super crazy on these. You do have the four tags. It does not come with capture speed, unfortunately, which you can feel. Some people just don't really pay attention to that capture speed or don't think it's that worth it because they're an attacker. That's up to you. It depends on what type of person, what type of player you are, but you can make with what you have. Lastly is the Mochi Mochi Metal. When using skill two, you reduce skill one by 5%. If you haven't caught on yet, it's a skill one oriented metal sets. Skill one's what you're gonna to want to focus on when you're looking for those cooldowns in your metals. Next up, we're going to have the Sulong. This is the one I talked to you guys about earlier. It's a little bit of overkill. You get a little diminishing returns on this. You do only have the two tags. You get the damage increase, you get the skill one. That is nice. And you get the extremely large amounts of cooldown. So let's start with the first one, the Pedro Hulkic Island Metal. When enemies are inflicted with a shock, reduce the cooldown time of skill one by 4%. Now, your shock on your skill one does that four times total. So that's 16% right there. And then if you hit skill two, that's another 4%. So you have 20% cooldown just from that. And then as well as the actual tag effect, it all stacks up crazy. Next up is the Kara Sulong metal. When enemies are inflicted with shock, reduce the cooldown time of skill one by 6%. So there's another 6%. So we're at 26% when they're inflicted with shock. Then the last one is just the carrot metal. When your HP is more than 70%, boost capture speed by 8%. That's all right. I think you do sacrifice too many like tags. It's too whatever. I like to prefer a bunch of tags. You do actually have the four tags, but they're only devil effect. So you do have the minx. You have the increased damage. You have the king's bird, which gives you the 14% cap speed. Then you have the skill two by 14%. And then you have Zo by sk uh, skill one by 20%. So... It does stack up. It can be a very useful metal set, but it's a little bit overkill, and I think the other ones are just a little bit better. So that one is an option if you have those event medals or if you have them built out. The other ones are nice because you can build those out and use them on other characters, whereas this one's very niche to using on Nami. Next up, again, we're back to the Beast Pirates. We're going to have the triple effect on all of these. It has four tags, so it's actually pretty crazy. The Toby Rope will go really, really well together. You have skill one, you have skill two, you have the dodge as well as the capture speed. So generic, you don't have damage increase or damage reduction, but they go pretty well. And then, so the Black Maria event metal, when an area around your capture treasure boosts the cooldown reduction of skill one by 10%. It's nice because you can just go back, recover at your flag, stack your skill one back up, and then shoot it out and be ready to destroy the enemy. When the allies are not near the treasure area where you are at, boost the cooldown reduction speed of skill one. Again, if you're sitting on your flag, that's going to be 20% skill one cooldown reduction, which just goes really, really far, I promise you. Then the last one is the Sabertooth Tiger. When using skill one, reduce the cooldown time with skill two by 5%. Getting that skill two is going to be the heavy hitter. Get the skill one is just to get your stacks. So that's kind of how it works. That's kind of how it plays and overall phenomenal. Let's talk about and get into the type of support that you want to run on Nami. Now, in general, on attackers, I think the attacker stat is the best. I would recommend going either attacker, runner, or defender on no matter what character you're using. So, Nami, I'm going to choose attacker. I think that's the best. The runner and defender one generally aren't that good. So, these tags are generally the easiest. That's why I recommend them. Next, I would try and dive into, if you can get Zoan, it's very difficult to come across. And it's very hard to build and takes a while to build out. But, I would recommend getting Zoan if you have that option. Then on top of that, I would try and go New World. New World kind of fits and is a little bit easier with the Zoan to build. It will allow you to do extra damage to those blues who kind of have that innate damage reduction towards your color. Then lastly, if you can fit in Straw Hat, if possible, Straw Hat goes a long way. I think it's a very undervalued support tag as it reduces that crit damage and can go a long way because certain units do crit and sometimes those crits can be the life or death of you. So just a quick tip on the supports depending on how you want to build them so and then always try and use the same color if your nami's red so i would use your support with full red units in general that is our nami guide i hope this was useful to many of you players i will let me know if there's anything that you would like answered i will be trying to answer in the comments down below so that is all i have for you guys i'm a boy Rome puss and i'm going to be taking off yeah peace beautiful people